There was once a man who lived in a small village known for his piety and devotion to his faith. Every night, he would look up at the stars and reflect on the greatness of the Creator. Yet, despite his commitment to his religious duties, he was troubled by a personal habit he couldn't seem to break, one that made him feel ashamed every time he performed it. He prayed for guidance, asking Allah for strength to overcome this weakness. One day, while visiting the local mosque, the Imam noticed the man's troubled state and approached him. The man hesitated but eventually confessed his struggle with self-control and the habit of masturbation. The Imam smiled gently and reminded him of a hadith from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where it was said, The strong man is not the one who can overpower others, but the one who controls himself when angry. The same applies to all desires, he explained. True strength lies in mastering one's urges, especially those that can distance a person from their spiritual path. He also reminded the man of the Quranic verse, and those who guard their chastity, 23-5. This verse encouraged the man to see his struggle not as a burden, but as an opportunity to grow closer to Allah. With newfound resolve, the man began to focus on his prayers and reflection, understanding that self-control is a form of worship. Now, imagine yourself in that man's shoes. What if the key to mastering your desires was simply a deeper connection with your faith? 1. The concept of self-control in Islam. In Islam, self-control is not just an act of personal discipline, but a form of worship that reflects one's devotion to Allah. It is a core value that permeates various aspects of a Muslim's life, guiding their behavior, thoughts and desires. Self-control is an essential part of Islamic teachings, as it allows a believer to resist the temptations that may lead them away from the path of righteousness. The Quran and Hadith repeatedly emphasize the importance of controlling one's desires, particularly in matters of physical urges and emotions. In Surah Al-Baqarah, it is mentioned, and seek help through patience and prayer, and indeed, it is difficult except for the humbly submissive to Allah. 2.45 This verse highlights the need for patience, which is closely linked to self-control as a means of seeking Allah's assistance in difficult situations. The patience to restrain oneself from sinful acts, including sexual misconduct, is seen as a way to purify the soul and strengthen one's relationship with the Creator. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also emphasized self-control in numerous hadiths. One of the most famous sayings is, The strong man is not the one who can overpower others, but the one who controls himself when angry. This hadith illustrates that strength in Islam is not measured by physical power or dominance, but by the ability to regulate one's own emotions and desires. This teaching extends to the realm of sexual urges and personal behavior. Islam encourages Muslims to guard their chastity and avoid behaviors that may lead to immorality, such as masturbation or fornication. The Quran instructs believers and those who guard their chastity, private parts. Surah Al-Mu'minun 23.5. Self-control in Islam is not merely about resisting immediate gratification, it is also about developing an awareness of the greater purpose behind one's actions. A Muslim is encouraged to reflect on the consequences of their actions, both in this life and the hereafter. The Prophet, peace be upon him, advised the youth, saying, O young men, those among you who can support a wife should marry, for it restrains eyes and preserves one from immorality. But he who cannot afford it should fast, for it is a means of controlling the sexual desire. This hadith highlights the importance of marriage as a lawful way to satisfy natural desires and fasting as a spiritual tool to control urges when marriage is not an option. Islamic scholars have also discussed self-control in depth, often linking it to the concept of nafs, the self or ego. 
The nafs can lead a person towards selfish desires, but with discipline, it can be controlled and refined. The Quran speaks about this struggle in Surah Al-Shams, and the soul and him who perfected it and inspired it with conscience of what is wrong for it and what is right for it. He is indeed successful who causes it to grow, and he is indeed a failure who stunts it. 91, 7-10 This indicates that success in life, both spiritually and materially, is closely tied to one's ability to nurture self-discipline and resist wrongful temptations. Furthermore, self-control is not limited to avoiding sinful acts. It is about moderation in all aspects of life. Islam teaches that even lawful desires such as eating and drinking should be enjoyed in moderation. Overindulgence can lead to a weakening of spiritual resolve and an increase in temptation. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The children of Adam fill no vessel worse than their stomach. It is sufficient for the son of Adam to eat a few mouthfuls to straighten his back. But if he must, fill it. Then one-third for his food, one-third for his drink, and one-third for his breath. This hadith exemplifies how moderation in everyday activities contributes to overall self-control. In essence, self-control in Islam is a reflection of one's faith and trust in Allah. It is about mastering the desires of the body and mind to align them with the will of Allah. By doing so, a Muslim not only strengthens their personal character, but also elevates their spiritual state, making them more mindful of their purpose in life and their accountability in the hereafter. Two. Understanding the spiritual impact of masturbation. Masturbation, though often considered a private matter, has significant implications in the spiritual context of Islam. While not explicitly mentioned in the Quran, Islamic scholars and religious texts provide guidance on how this act affects one's spiritual journey. In Islam, the emphasis is placed on purity, both physical and spiritual. Therefore, Actions that may lead to impurity or distract a person from their worship are viewed critically. Masturbation falls into this category, as it is seen as a distraction that can weaken a person's connection with Allah and their ability to maintain spiritual discipline. The Quran emphasizes the importance of chastity and self-restraint. One of the key verses that speaks to the broader concept of sexual purity is found in Surah Al-Mu'minun. And those who guard their chastity, except with their wives, or those their right hands possess, for indeed, they will not be blamed. But whoever seeks beyond that, then those are the transgressors. 23, 5-7 While this verse does not specifically mention masturbation, Scholars have interpreted it as an exhortation to preserve sexual relations within the boundaries of marriage, and any form of sexual gratification outside of this is considered sinful. Masturbation, being a form of self-gratification outside marriage, is thus discouraged, as it does not align with the principles of modesty and purity that Islam promotes. Moreover, the spiritual impact of masturbation is often linked to the concept of nafs, the lower self or ego. The nafs is described as the part of the self that inclines towards base desires, and in Islamic teachings, one of the ultimate goals of a Muslim is to refine and control the nafs through self-discipline. The act of masturbation can be seen as giving in to the temptations of the nafs leading a person to become more focused on worldly pleasures rather than their spiritual development. In Surah an naziat the Quran speaks about this internal struggle. But as for him who feared the standing before his Lord and restrained the soul from its desire, then indeed paradise will be his refuge. 79 to 40 to 41. This verse highlights the reward for those who control their desires for the sake of Allah, implying that those who succumb to such desires may miss out on the spiritual fulfillment that comes from worship and submission.
Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, provided practical advice for managing desires in a halal way. He encouraged marriage as the proper context for sexual relations and offered fasting as a solution for those who were unable to marry. In a well-known hadith, he said, O oh, young people, whoever among you is able to marry, should marry, because it helps him lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whoever is not able to marry, should fast, as fasting diminishes sexual desire. Sahih Bukhari Fasting in this context is not merely abstaining from food, but also a means to develop self-control and suppress physical desires, thus helping a believer focus on their spiritual duties. The spiritual impact of masturbation can also extend beyond the individual, affecting their ability to engage in acts of worship with sincerity and focus. In Islamic teachings, the state of tahara, purity, is essential for performing acts of worship such as prayer. Masturbation breaks the state of wudu, ritual purity, requiring a full ghusl, ritual bath, before one can return to a state of purity necessary for prayer. This interruption can lead to a sense of spiritual disruption, distancing the individual from regular worship and causing feelings of guilt or shame, which may further hinder spiritual progress. The Quran stresses the importance of maintaining a state of purity. Indeed, Allah loves those who are constantly repentant and loves those who purify themselves. 2222 Thus, maintaining purity is seen as a way to stay close to Allah, while actions that require constant purification may be seen as detracting from this closeness. Islamic scholars differ in their rulings on masturbation, with some considering it a minor sin, while others view it as a serious offense depending on the circumstances. However, there is a consensus that habitual masturbation is spiritually harmful. It can become a source of distraction, reduce a person's self-discipline, and shift their focus away from their relationship with Allah. Instead of viewing the body as a sacred trust from Allah, one risks indulging in actions that are rooted in immediate gratification rather than long-term spiritual well-being. In this light, masturbation is not just a physical act, but a test of one's ability to control their desires and prioritize their faith. To counter the negative spiritual impact of masturbation, Islam encourages believers to seek alternative methods of dealing with their desires, such as fasting, engaging in regular prayer, seeking beneficial knowledge, and staying busy with productive activities. It is also encouraged to make dua, supplication, for strength and guidance in overcoming temptations. As stated in Surah Al-Ankabut, and those who strive for us, we will surely guide them to our ways. And indeed, Allah is with the doers of good. 2969. This verse serves as a reminder that with sincere effort and trust in Allah, a believer can overcome challenges related to self-control, including those involving physical desires. In conclusion, masturbation in Islam is viewed through a spiritual lens that emphasizes purity, self-restraint, and discipline. While it may be a personal and private act, its implications can deeply affect one's spiritual state. By striving to control such desires and focusing on strengthening their connection with Allah, a Muslim can achieve greater spiritual fulfillment and live a life aligned with the teachings of Islam. 3. Prophetic Teachings on Resisting Desires In Islam, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, serve as an essential guide to living a life that is both righteous and disciplined. One of the core aspects of his teachings is the importance of resisting base desires, which can lead a person away from the path of Allah. Desires in the form of physical urges, anger, and worldly temptations are natural parts of human existence. However, Islam emphasizes the need to control and manage these desires to maintain a pure soul and a close connection to Allah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
offered clear guidance on how to approach and manage desires in a way that aligns with Islamic values. One of his most well-known sayings is, The strong man is not the one who can overpower others, but the one who controls himself when angry. Sahih Bukhari This hadith shows that true strength in Islam is not about physical dominance or power over others, but rather the ability to control oneself, particularly in moments of emotional or physical intensity. This teaching highlights the broader concept of self-control in Islam, which extends to resisting sinful desires, including lustful thoughts and actions. One of the main reasons Islam places such a strong emphasis on resisting desires is to protect the believer's soul from moral and spiritual corruption. The Quran repeatedly warns against following desires blindly, as it can lead a person astray. In Surah Al-Jathiyah, it is mentioned, Have you seen the one who takes his own desire as his God? Allah has left him astray despite his knowledge, sealed his hearing and heart, and placed a cover on his sight. Who then can guide him after Allah? Will you not then be mindful? 45.23 This verse warns about the dangers of allowing desires to dominate one's life. When a person follows their desires without regard for divine guidance, it can lead to spiritual blindness and disconnection from Allah. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also provided practical tools for resisting desires, particularly sexual urges. He encouraged marriage as a lawful way to satisfy natural desires. For those who could not marry, he suggested fasting as a means of controlling sexual desires. In a famous hadith, the Prophet said, O oh young people, whoever among you is able to marry, should marry, because it helps him lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whoever is not able to marry, should fast as fasting diminishes sexual desire. Sahih Bukhari This guidance demonstrates that fasting, beyond its physical benefits, serves as a spiritual tool to suppress physical urges and redirect one's focus toward worship and obedience to Allah. Another profound teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, regarding resisting desires is the significance of lowering the gaze. He taught that controlling what one looks at is the first step in controlling desires. In a hadith, the Prophet said, Do not follow a casual, unintentional look with another look. The first look is pardoned, but not the second. Sunan Abu Dawood This highlights the importance of modesty and self-control, especially in the context of sexual desires. By lowering one's gaze, a person can avoid situations that might lead to sinful thoughts or actions. In Surah An-Nur, the Quran commands, Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and guard their private parts. That is purer for them. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what they do. 2430 this verse reiterates the need for both men and women to control their desires by being mindful of their actions and what they allow themselves to be exposed to. Resisting desires in Islam is not just about avoiding sinful actions, but also about purifying the heart and mind from harmful influences. The Prophet, peace be upon him, frequently emphasized the importance of keeping the heart free from attachment to worldly desires. He warned against excessive indulgence in material pleasures, which can distract a person from their spiritual obligations. The Prophet said, This world is sweet and green, and verily, Allah is going to install you as vicegerents in it in order to see how you act. So beware of this world and beware of women, i.e., of being misled by them. Verily, the first trial of the children of Israel was concerning women. Sahih Muslim While this hadith is often understood in the context of sexual temptation, it also reflects the broader idea that attachment to worldly pleasures can be a test for believers, diverting them from the path of Allah. 
Furthermore, resisting desires is also closely tied to the concept of jihad al-nafs, or the struggle against the self. The Prophet, peace be upon him, referred to this struggle as the greater jihad, signifying its importance in the life of a believer. Nafs refers to the ego, or the lower self, which is inclined towards selfish desires. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The most excellent jihad is to strive against your own soul and its desires for the sake of Allah. Ibn Majah This struggle is a constant battle that requires vigilance, self-awareness, and reliance on Allah for strength. The Quran supports this notion in Surah Ash-Shams. And the soul and him who proportioned it and inspired it with its evil and its good. He has succeeded who purifies it, and he has failed who instills it with corruption. 91, 7, and 10. This verse emphasizes that success in life is achieved by purifying the soul from evil inclinations and striving toward righteousness. Ultimately, the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, on resisting desires are a reminder that a Muslim's true success lies in their ability to control their nafs and remain obedient to Allah. By resisting the temptations of the world and focusing on spiritual growth, a believer can attain a higher level of faith and closeness to Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, provided a comprehensive approach to managing desires, emphasizing the importance of self-discipline, modesty, and reliance on Allah's guidance. Through fasting, lowering the gaze, avoiding temptation, and engaging in the jihad al-nafs, a Muslim can build the spiritual strength needed to resist desires and lead a life that pleases Allah. 4. The Importance of Modesty and Chastity in the Quran Modesty and chastity hold an essential place in Islamic teachings, both as virtues that elevate the moral character of a believer and as safeguards that protect the spiritual well-being of the community. The Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, stress the significance of maintaining personal modesty and guarding one's chastity as fundamental to the moral fabric of society. These qualities not only reflect self-discipline and devotion to Allah, but also protect individuals from the harmful consequences of immorality. The Quran provides direct guidance on the importance of modesty, particularly in the context of sexual behavior and relationships. In Surah An-Nur, it commands believers to lower their gaze and guard their private parts, emphasizing that this form of restraint is purifying for the soul. The verse reads, Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and guard their private parts. That is purer for them. Indeed, Allah is acquainted with what they do. 2430 this command is followed by a similar directive for women, establishing the expectation that both genders should exercise modesty as an act of worship and self-control. By encouraging modesty, the Quran fosters an environment where respect for oneself and others is preserved, helping to prevent moral corruption and illicit behavior. Chastity, or higher in Arabic, is closely linked to modesty in Islamic teachings and is regarded as a form of protection for both physical and spiritual well-being. The Quran not only calls for the protection of one's private parts, but also identifies chastity as a marker of righteousness and faith. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, the Quran states, And those who guard their chastity, except from their wives or those their right hands possess, for indeed, they will not be blamed. 23, 5 to 6. Here, chastity is presented as a defining characteristic of the righteous, with lawful sexual relations confined to marriage. By guarding their chastity, believers are not only preserving their honor, but also strengthening their relationship with Allah by adhering to His commands. In addition to Quranic verses, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, reinforced the significance of modesty and chastity through his actions and sayings. One of the famous hadiths related to this is, Modesty is part of faith, and faith is in paradise. 
but obscenity is part of hardness of heart, and hardness of heart is in the fire. Sunan Ibn Majah This hadith underlines the close connection between modesty and faith, indicating that the level of one's modesty is a reflection of their spiritual state. Those who practice modesty are promised the rewards of paradise, while those who engage in immoral and obscene behavior are warned of the spiritual consequences. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also emphasized that haya, or modesty, is an inherent quality of a believer, a characteristic that strengthens their consciousness of Allah and deters them from sinful acts. Furthermore, the Prophet, peace be upon him, specifically addressed the dangers of indecency and its harmful effects on the community. He said, When lewdness is part of anything, it becomes defective, and when modesty is part of anything, it becomes beautiful. Tirmidhi. This hadith highlights the destructive nature of indecency, which can erode the moral foundations of individuals and society at large. By contrast, Modesty adds beauty and virtue to one's character, creating a protective barrier against moral decay. The emphasis on modesty is not just for individual benefit, but is intended to preserve the integrity and spiritual health of the Muslim community as a whole. The importance of modesty and chastity is also closely tied to the concept of tahara, or purity, in Islam. Physical and spiritual purity are essential for acts of worship, particularly prayer, and any actions that violate modesty or chastity are seen as pollutants to this purity. For example, after engaging in sexual activity, a full ghusl, ritual purification, is required before one can return to a state of purity. The Quran emphasizes the importance of maintaining this state of purity in Surah Al-Baqarah. Indeed, Allah loves those who are constantly repentant and loves those who purify themselves. 2.222 By practicing modesty and chastity, a believer ensures that they remain in a state of purity, both physically and spiritually, which is necessary for maintaining a close relationship with Allah. Chastity and modesty also serve as protective measures for both men and women. By setting clear boundaries, Islam prevents individuals from falling into temptation and moral degradation. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, provided guidance for both genders, encouraging men and women to avoid circumstances that could lead to sinful behavior. He said, A man should not be alone with a woman unless there is a mahram, close male relative, and a woman should not travel except with a mahram, Sahih Muslim. This hadith emphasizes the importance of establishing protective measures to maintain modesty and safeguard against inappropriate situations. Such precautions are designed not to restrict freedom, but to create an environment where moral integrity is preserved. The value of modesty and chastity in Islam is not limited to physical behavior, but also extends to thoughts and intentions. The Quran advises believers to maintain a pure heart, free from sinful thoughts and desires. In Surah An-Nur, it advises, And tell the believing women to reduce of their vision and guard their private parts, and not expose their adornment, except that which necessarily appears thereof. 24-31 This verse reflects the holistic nature of Islamic modesty, which encompasses both inner and outer conduct. By encouraging believers to guard their thoughts and actions, Islam promotes a comprehensive approach to morality that begins with the heart and is reflected in outward behavior. In conclusion, the importance of modesty and chastity in the Quran is profound and far-reaching. These values are not only about physical restraint, but also about fostering an environment of respect, self-discipline, and spiritual growth. Through the guidance of the Quran, and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, believers are encouraged to maintain modesty and chastity as a means of protecting their faith, their community, and their relationship with Allah. By adhering to these principles, Muslims can navigate the challenges of worldly desires, 
while remaining focused on their spiritual obligations and ultimate goal of attaining paradise. In conclusion, the teachings of Islam provide a clear path toward a life of purity, discipline, and spiritual growth. By embracing the principles of modesty, chastity, and self-control, we not only protect ourselves from the harmful effects of worldly desires, but also strengthen our connection with Allah. The struggle to resist our base desires is a journey toward becoming better individuals and more faithful servants of our Creator. May we all strive to embody these values in our daily lives and find peace, guidance and reward in our dedication to the path of righteousness.